Okay, so this is uh, just a short video um, showing you the operation uh, of uh, a, a device that I created to adjust the uh, centre of gravity for uh, model gliders. Uh, specifically, this model is for the, the Maxa uh, or Supra model from, from Vladimir's models. Um, so what you're seeing here is um, this red section of tube uh, represents the, the ballast tube in the model. So this isn't part of the actual mechanism, this is just here to create structure for it uh, so you can see the internal mechanism of it. And I've just made a little cutaway here so you can see the lead screw um, and the, the weight and the little device. So to orientate yourself in the model, if you know the, the model I'm speaking about, the forward bolt that mounts the, um, the ballast is here. And uh, this second bolt would be uh, where the, underneath the, the little, the right, right, sorry, right where the saddle is that the, the wing connects to, in that little pocket that you can see where the wires fit in, uh, you'd be mounting a screw there, which would also attach the mechanism. So there'd be two, a two-point attachment uh, through the existing ballast tube. The only ex uh, modification that would need to be made to the ballast tube is this little section here. You'd need to cut out a little section to receive uh, the servo. Now this is just a prototype just to see if the actual the thing actually works. But uh, if, if I end up making some of these, uh, it'll have a much smaller servo here, 8-gram uh, servo. This was all I had to make a prototype with. Uh, but I, I'd use a high-quality metal gear. Uh, servo, I think the KST, uh, I think it's called an X08, uh, which is small enough to fit inside uh, the, the hatch of the, the Maxa and uh, without obstructing any of the, the push rods which would be running underneath it. And you would still have room if you had your receiver, for example, underneath uh, the ballast tube, you would still have room for that. In addition to that, the ballast tube can be pulled, uh, sorry, the, the variable CG unit can be pulled in and out um, in the same way that you pull the ballast in or out. Uh, let's talk about weights of the unit. So, um, the mechanism itself, uh, which is the lead screw, the guide rail, and the weight, all adds up to about... Uh, at the moment it would be about 15 grams. So it's very, very light. Sorry, not including the weight. Uh, the, the lead screw and uh, the, the mounting mechanisms and the guide rail uh, would be about 12 grams. The weight itself is 15 grams. Now, 15 grams is just an arbitrary amount I chose, but uh, I imagine that you could add different weights to affect the CG in different ways. The 15 grams uh, affects the centre of gravity by um, approximately 3 millimetres, over a 300 millimetre length. Now this model here isn't actually, this is about 250 millimetres from end to end, uh, but on a 300 millimetre uh, unit with 15 grams of weight, the centre of gravity should be af affected by about uh, two and a half to three millimetres according to my uh, calculations. And that's as it travels from one end to the other. The speed of traverse uh, in, the, in the completed unit should be seven seconds from one end to the other. So even though this is a very high speed servo, uh, to get it to move from one end to the other uh, it, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, so about three and a half seconds from your, your center point to forward center of gravity, and then three and a half seconds from your uh, center point to the rearward center of gravity that you would want to be using. So all in all, I'm thinking that the finished model should uh, come in, uh, I'm trying to get it in at under 30 grams, including the servo. So that weight would include the, the ballast weight, oh sorry, the center of gravity weight, the lead screw, the guide rail, uh, the mounting mechanism, which you can't see is in here and here, and the 8 gram servo itself. So it's a very small uh, uh, trade-off in weight, uh, particularly as the, the weight of the servo is actually forward of your existing centre of gravity. So um, 
part of that weight is offset would be offset by removing weight from the uh, from the nose of the glider. So let's give it a run and we'll see how it works. Okay, so let's take a little look at it uh, in operation. <coughs> uh, as I said, this is uh, modified for the uh, ballast tube that comes in a Maxa, and the only reason that uh, for that is is that I fly a Maxa, and I, you know, could obviously take the measurements off it, and uh, I could work with that. But th this, you know, the system uh, will work in obviously any model uh, as long as you have sufficient room to. To, uh, to place it. So uh, any model that has uh, a ballast tube which has an internal diameter of 16 millimeters uh, which I think is 5 eighths of an inch but it's, it's, it's close to a both the metric and the imperial work at this size uh, that I can tell you because I machined this out of uh, imperial bar stock even though Australia is a, a metric country, we still have, you know, both systems here. Um, so yeah, as long as it has a, uh, a ballast tube which has an internal diameter of uh, between 15 and a half and 16 millimetres, uh, then this will slide straight in and, uh, and you'll be ready to go. Okay, so as I, uh, here, here I have it connected to the rudder channel, and the only reason I have it connected to the rudder channel is just so you can see. Normally, uh, you would have it on the, uh, I would imagine, the gear channel connected to a slider, or you may have it mixed to your camber, for example, uh, uh, or even on a switch if you only wanted to have a, a, a central, a rearward, and a forward center of gravity and not worry about what's in between, then you could easily put it on a switch as well. So, uh, oh, by the way, I'm operating at uh, 8.4 volts here, so this is as fast as this will actually travel. Uh, the servo that I intend to um, manufacture it with is rated from uh, single cell up to two cell LiPo, so 3 volts to 8.4. Um, you'd want to run it at, at high voltage if you had the option uh, to get the maximum speed out of the system. So you can see it centres quite easily due to the resolution of the potentiometer, uh, much higher than the standard potentiometer that comes with a servo. And there it is traversing. And you can reach midpoints. And it'll stop wherever you want it to stop. All the way to the end. Uh, in this demo, I'm not going to drive it all the way to the end of the screw because there's a little in this little model I made here. There's a little uh, point where it gets stuck, and uh, it's not so I can pull it apart and work on it. It's not actually glued together at the moment, so I'm just showing a little bit of operation. But obviously, the full uh, working model will, will travel all the way from uh, from this extreme point down to uh, or what is on this model that that point there. Uh, and that would be at the maximum throw of your servo set in the transmitter. So on my JR transmitter, that's 150%. Um, and then if, uh, what you have to be very careful of with this system is that, um, you know, before you install it, you'd really want to set a limit on your servo because if you drove this with a high voltage servo into the end of the limit of the screw, uh, it would, it would without doubt, break the the unit so you'd have to be very very careful about getting your limits um, adjusted and make sure that there wasn't some weird program on your uh, transmitter that overrode it even just like a, by a couple of percent because as I said if you drove it into the end, the end stops on this uh, it would uh, wreck something for sure uh, just due to the, the you know the, the torque and then the, the, the mechanical advantage of having a lead screw uh, yeah it would just pull itself to bits So once again, as I said, the tar I think at the moment it'll traverse in 13 seconds. My target is uh, a seven second traverse from, uh, from zero millimeters to 300 millimeters.
Okay, so now just taking the uh, mechanism apart so you can see how, how it works. Uh, so as I said, there's two bolts which attach it to the plane itself. Uh, this is just right behind the, the hatch. So you'd be using the existing bolt in the Maxa fuselage. And then this is an attachment point here that you would have to put in, in yourself. And it's just simply a matter of drilling a hole through the ballast tube um, underneath the wing saddle. So here you can see the survey that, um, that I've modified. So what I've done is I've added some uh, electronics in here. Uh, in the, uh, the smaller model that I'll be producing, the survey will be so small that there'll actually be some, uh, I would imagine there'll be a little bit of modification to this rear part of the, the servo. In fact, it may even come off altogether. And, uh, and the little, you'd see the little circuit board there and then the little uh, adjustment that I've made to the, the potentiometer. Uh, and then this uh, little mechanism here that I've machined just simply glues onto the servo and the guide rail fits like this. Uh, the, the unit would screw through a very, uh, it'd be a short screw but a, with a very long screwdriver through the, the, lead, the lead screw which is hollow and that's how you'd attach it to the uh, servo itself. Uh, so I'd, I'd be imagining supplying a screwdriver that would allow you to, uh, to reach that screw uh, should you need to maintain the unit or swap the servo or, or something like that. Um, now the lead screw itself is carbon fibre and it's hollow so it's incredibly light. Uh, this I think weighs 8 grams and uh, the, the actual model that I'm going to produce, which will have a coarser thread and be thinner, uh, I'm thinking will come in at hopefully around 5 grams. So it's very, very light, uh, very, very stiff, has a very low coefficient of friction, so it doesn't need to be uh, lubricated in any way. Uh, so it's, it's designed to run dry, and uh, you can see um, when I add the weight, this is a... Uh, a tungsten, it's, it's tungsten powder cast in resin, so that's how I get the, the weight uh, into it. But you can see that it, it runs very, very freely. There's very little friction. Uh, so there's very little drain on the servo and on your overall battery power. Uh, the weight itself, um, I'm imagining, will be. Uh, varying in size depending on how much you want to move your centre of gravity. Um, I, I can't really make the lead screw longer or shorter. That would be one way of adjusting the range of centre of gravity that's possible, but uh, it's going to become difficult to mount the mechanism uh, inside the glider if it becomes much longer. And also the, the, um, you know, the ability to drive this from one end to the other in a certain amount of time uh, it, it becomes problematic. So I think 300 millimeters will be the, the length of the lead screw that I'll be doing, which will be approximately this long. And as I said, the 15 gram weight uh, should give you a two and a half to three millimeter effect on your center of gravity. If you were to add uh, more weight, uh, change that from 15 grams to 20 grams to 30 grams, if you're prepared to um, uh, add that much weight to your plane for the proposed advantage of having a, a variable center of gravity, then uh, then that would affect the center, the overall range of adjustment. Uh, I would be imagining by perhaps up to four, four and a half millimeters, which is a substantial um, uh, difference in center of gravity. If you, if you consider how much lead uh, that you would add or remove from the nose to achieve a four millimeter shift in your center of gravity, uh, that's a substantial amount. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, as I, it's, this isn't. Uh, uh, you know, as I said, a production model. This is just a prototype that I've made to get proof of concept. At the moment, it appears to work. I have to do some tests on the longevity of the uh, electronics that are installed here. Um, but other than that, it, it works absolutely fine. 
uh, I, I don't see that there's a, uh, a problem in terms of the mechanics of it. It's just electronics, and electronics is by no means my strong point. So, uh, so uh, if you have any suggestions on what I can do with the electronics, uh, I'll be happy to, to hear them. Okay, thank you.